So, last time we went over how to open lawn. Look, this can be trickier than it looks, okay? We also got the right folder structure down and have a convenient way of testing our changes in real time. So go check that out if you somehow stumbled into this video before looking at part one. Or maybe you're already an expert and know all of that. Which in that case, what the heck are you doing here? This is a beginner series. In either case, you should subscribe and stick around for a while. I love making these videos where I can entertain but also explain, and if you can retain what I throw at you, it makes all the effort worthwhile. I really enjoy content creating, and if there's any chance somehow, some way, to make it a full-time gig, that'd be a dream. But first, we've got a sponsor on the chat. No, uh, no, not doing this again. But these patrons are pretty cool, so you get to see their names again. Now, for the agenda, we've got boring stuff, and wow, this really does look pretty boring. This is all here to set us up for success. I know we want to start building the fun bits, but I promise you'll have almost every tool you'll need to start building efficiently by the end of this. Hopefully. So, let's get to it. Map metadata. Scary word, but just think of it as data about itself. Meta self. And the self is the map. Cool. Take a look under the map tab, click metadata, and oh, don't think too hard about most of these boxes. There's so many of them because Lawn is a very flexible tool which makes it phenomenal for customization. But a real pain in the butt for trying to figure out what's going on. Just think of this window as your way to define some unique features of your map. The way you enter it, leave it, how your dashes work, etc, etc. All we want to be concerned with for today are these couple of boxes under general. And I guess the map music and map ambience down here if you'd rather listen to something else while you're testing your map. But that's not a big deal right now. Pay attention and redirect your eyeballs up here. These are probably the first parameters you want to set always for any map. Seriously. Starting room means... Okay, come on, I don't gotta spell it out. All the rooms in your current map will be laid out in a list here. So if you want functionality like, say, how you enter prologue here in this room, but can go left to visit the intro car, I'm sure there will be people watching this who've never seen this before. Then this is how you can make that happen. Without a room specified here, Lon will determine the first room you enter based on the world's coordinates, and if I say any more right now, it'll only be more confusing, so please just use this drop down and throw a room in there. Now we can move on to starting inventory. You may hear the word inventory and think, wrong game. What this field refers to is one of those features I mentioned before. You know, like how core doesn't give you your dashes back when on the ground, prolong doesn't allow you to dash at all, and the summit gives you two dashes permanently. Oh, uh, don't freak out if it doesn't live update like everything else. This is one of those features that does require resetting the chapter in order for it to take effect. That's just the way it goes, so keep it in mind when you're experimenting with some of these other boxes and wonder, why did nothing happen? To thoroughly reset the chapter, hit F5 to force a reload, return to map, and hop back in. And if you still don't see the changes, did you hit Control S or the save button in LUN? Yeah, that's what I thought. Finally, intro type and wipe aren't really that critical, but they can add some flavor to how you enter your map and how you enter your map after dying. Under intro type, you may recognize some of these intro animations from Vanilla Celeste, like jump, ah, classic intro to city, or think for a bit, hmm, yes, sure is an intro, or walk in left. Oh. Okay, Madeline, as you can see, some of these may not be the best for your map depending on your use case, so just be smart about it. Wipe changes the shape of the screen wipe when entering the level from the overworld and when you die. Test them out by retrying a bunch through them and see whatever satisfies your needs. If you're looking for more information in this tab, especially for any of the components we just reviewed, there's a tool that'll blow your mind. It's your cursor. Hover over each of these boxes and these tooltips will have all the explanations you'll need if you don't like mine. Anytime you're hanging out in these windows, just try it out anytime you need a little reminder. Now go to map music and select music underscore farewell underscore final underscore run because it's a banger of a soundtrack and let's jump right into the nitty gritty. It's time to make a map. So let's get back into the editor and wait, why is the boring section not over yet? Well, it's because I didn't actually go over what any of these things are. This rectangle, like I said in the last video, has got it all. I went over a few, but now it's time to formalize our approach a bit, starting with tiles. These six options are all just different ways of accomplishing the same thing. That is to say, put tile in room. For all of these options, you can choose to either put tile in front or put tile in back. 
Something to note here is that Celeste has specific tiles which are designated as foreground and background. So if the list of foreground and background look different, they're supposed to. They're different tiles. You can grab and walk on foreground tiles and you can stare at how pretty the background tiles are. Another important note here comes from Cork, where he says, Huh, this is a good place to mention that background tiles are not a background. Huh, I wonder why he wouldn't want us to... Yeah, don't do this. Oops! Average editor here. Forgot to mention the last pop-up for these three in particular. Circle, ellipse, and rectangle, which have selections for fill and line. But I think these speak for themselves, so carry on. Now moving on to place. Why does it look like that? I mean, I know the entities list looked like that in the last video, but I just want to work with vanilla entities for this series. If you're the eager modding beaver and already have some mods downloaded, this is probably a similar issue you're facing. So we fix this by, um, the wiki. Ah, uh, so we fix this by going to view, clicking on dependencies only and checking off all of these selections. And also while you're at it, show Cork and Snip much love in helping with the development of this series. They're both fantastic Celeste mottos and deserve all the love they can get. And also while you're also while you're at it, you need this wiki. This here, it'll probably take care of most of the questions you may have regarding lawn as a whole. There's a lot here and it's easy to get overwhelmed, but I promise this will probably be one of the best resources you can keep in your back pocket as you go through your modding journey. Also something to note, if you don't have dependencies enabled and you happen to have a billion Celeste mods, no, 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 don't click on. There's a lot of decals with all these mods. So please select those boxes if you don't need them. Now with a significantly more manageable list on our hands, we can actually do some fun stuff like bringing in, well, there's still a lot of entities. It's still overwhelming. So we'll get back to that in the next video. But here's a list of a few you might be familiar with that don't have the most obvious names in this list, just so you can mess around with them in your own map. Moving on to triggers. Sweet, this is a much better list. While a lot of these are very specific for stuff like playing certain music, moving the camera around, I'd like to indulge in the more simple, straightforward ones first. Like taking a snowball to the face. So we can click on snowballs, draw a simple boundary line here, and anytime we cross it, we get a snowball to the face. But what if we want to set up some sort of marker to indicate bad thing about to happen here? So players aren't suddenly surprised by this annoying object. Well, one way is through our decorations, like a foreground decal or even a background decal. I like this one despite it's warning about a rock slide and not snowballs. And of course, the players gotta know where to go, right? That's a truly menacing sign that no one would dare cross, unless this arrow points them in the right direction. So. Hit save on those changes, and now we know where we're going, can pass over the arrow, then check out the sign which we can pass behind, and that about does it for all the different placement categories. But I don't think this arrow is emphasizing that we need to go right enough. For all we know, maybe it's just pointing at that cool sign. No worries, that's where the selection tab comes in. And it even gives us fine control over what elements we want to move around. If we try to highlight it under all, it's grabbing everything and we don't want that at all. We know we put this arrow decal in the background, so let's hit that button, then click and highlight over the arrow. And as you can see, even though I purposely highlighted more than just the arrow, this is the only background decal we've got. So let's make our intended route extra clear by moving it out here, just floating there. Neat, now the player is certain that there's something over to the right. But what could it be? I think you probably anticipated that would happen. Let's move on to the last tab in the list, which is where the world building will truly begin. The rooms tab. It's only got two tabs, nice and simple. No, wait, those aren't the names of the tabs. It's place room and select room. It's important to mention that whichever tab you select gives you the ability to right click on your rooms and ah, oh, that's the room editing tab. You can edit the name, size, and don't worry about all this stuff yet. That's for a future video. Stop looking at it. But under place room, it's just as you expect. Left click and drag, and you've got a room to whatever size you want. Then release, give it an appropriate name, A underscore O2 underscore post snowballs, then create room. And wow, look at that. 
a room for the arrow to point to. You can even left click and drag it over, then save and go into your game and... And some ground. <laughs> Put the damn spawn point in there. <laughs> wow, first try! <sighs> Yes, you need player entities in every single room, which is why we favorited it with a double left click in the last episode. No player entity means the room does not exist and you will not be able to enter it. But on second thought, I think I want to build up to that stressful snowball room. So I want to place it on the other side of this new room. And yes, I could just go to the room tab, then move the current new room to the other side, or use alt plus an arrow key to move it around. But this is a tutorial. So I'm gonna be thorough and click on our last tab, select room, then select the other room and drag it over. Oh no, but wait, our naming convention. Change it right now. You'll forget after some shuffling if you have a lot of rooms already. Don't kid yourself. So right click on the right room and make it A underscore zero two underscore snowballs. Then go to the left one and change that to A underscore zero one underscore intro. It's time to hit save, then go back to your game for us to look at some magic. Beautiful. One last thing to do is check back in on our buddy, the map metadata. Make sure to check on the starting room and that it's set to our intended first room. And there are the beginnings of your map. Let's wrap up this episode with two more important details around these player entities. We've got one in each of these rooms, so if we walk here and take a death, then we'll spawn to the closest player entity. You see the problem? This is more of a case-by-case -case situation, but for the most part, the expected behavior behind re-entering rooms you've already completed is that if you take a death, you'll spawn back to where you enter the room. So what do you do? It's as simple as placing another player entity at the exit of each room. Yep, that's right. Even more utility for the player entity. They're going to be everywhere across your maps because they kind of have to be. Please favorite this stupid thing. Yes, this is the third time. The other detail is something that can be easily overlooked, but simple to remedy. When you enter your starting room and your starting room happens to have multiple player entities, how does Everest decide where to put you? The answer is as simple as right clicking on one of those player entities, then checking off that default spawn checkbox. Now you've got full control over how you enter your map. And with that, we've got more rooms, some quality music, and even a couple of nice graphics to look at. Ah, the editor is back one last time to tell you about a really awful bug in Lawn, if I'm being completely honest. And it's one pertaining to version 0.9.0. If you're in the Rooms tab and type something here, then save. When you close out of Lawn and go back into it, you'll be met with... Nothing. And not like no map, more like no top bar, no toolbox, and no way to fix the issue within Lawn itself. So we've got to take a little trip through Lon's folder structure in order to remedy this. Snips got us covered with a few ways we can fix this, but either way, it'll involve us finding this persistence.conf file within our installation of Lon, and this location is operating system specific. So in Windows, the easiest way to get there would be to press Windows plus R, then this little window will pop up. Here is where you can type this file path, and it'll bring you straight there. As for Mac OS and Linux, these are the folder paths you'll want to look down to get to the same file. Once you're there, you've got two options depending on your technical proficiency. You can either straight up delete this persistence.conf file, which will straight up delete all of your persistence settings, or open the file with some sort of text editor, find the line that starts with tool room, delete that line, then save and close the file. It'll save any other persistence settings you may have and give your interface back once you open lawn again. If there's one thing to learn from this, don't type anything to this stupid box. There's nothing to search for. Why would you do that anyway? All right, all right, let's wrap this up. Back to past me. I think that's enough information smashed into your brain for one day. So you should smash oh God, so the subscribe button and follow along with this series because next time we're gonna be going pretty heavy into the wide world of entities since that tab terrifies me. So it's gonna be its own video. I hope you're prepared. You're basically ready to go with everything the Vanilla Celeste assets have to offer. Thank you for watching, integrating further into the modding community, and most importantly, thank you for mapping along with me. Bye-bye.